Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be a song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle Hi, I'm Virgie Holbrook. I'm the pastor of Leap of Faith Church, and I'm so glad that you're here with me uh, to worship today. It is Sunday, October 15th, the middle of the month of October already. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming to worship. Today we're going to be moving away from Job, a book that we've been in for the last several weeks. And today we're going to be talking about who's in and who's out as far as the church is concerned. First, though, may I ask your help? Could you subscribe to our Leap of Faith Church uh, YouTube channel? Give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying the worship service. What's really a help is if you'll share this worship service, just click that share button, and I think it'll tell you exactly what to do. Think about someone dear to you, someone who you think would enjoy worshiping with you here on YouTube, and just go ahead and share the, the worship service with that person. We can chat, of course, during the premiere if you're worshiping at a different time. Um, not on Sunday morning, not at 9.30. Please leave your name in a comment or text your name to me, 903-821-4505. It is so much help to know who's, who's worshiping with us. As I say, every single week, we are grateful for your financial support of ministry here at Leap of Faith Church. If you are blessed to be able to offer that support, there are several ways to do that. If you go to our Leap of Faith Church Facebook page, there's a donate button. Just click that button. It couldn't be easier. On our mylofc.org website, there's a PayPal button. Click that button. It couldn't be easier. If you receive our church newsletter on Thursday evening, there's a PayPal button. You know what to do. Click that button. It couldn't be easier. If none of those options work for you, you can always text to give 903-225-8774. Or you can write a check. Just write a check like you have have written a check all this time to Leap of Faith Church. Put it in an envelope and mail it to 5615 North Farm to Market, 1417, that's Sherman, Texas, 75092. I remind you again, Leap of Faith Church. Uh, org, our website for information about the church, or our Facebook page, Leap of Faith Church. Now let's begin with a prayer. God, if there are those lost and lonely, hungry and hopeless, anxious and afraid, if there are any like this who are worshiping here with us today, would you please work through our thoughts, our intentions, work through our words to bring them comfort and offer them hope. We're praying in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we are moving away from the Old Testament into the New Testament, to the Gospel according to Matthew, it's chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. It's a long story. Listen in. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and to send them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard, and I'll pay you whatever's right. So they went. He went out again at noon, went out again at three in the afternoon, and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all this time doing nothing? Because no one hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon, they came and each received a denarius. So when those who came were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each, each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired, hired last, they worked only one hour, they said, and you made us equal to them who have borne the burden of work and the heat all the day long. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to it? Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. 
I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have a right to do that? Don't I have a right to do what I want to do with my own money? Or are you envious because I'm generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. I ask God to bless this reading of God's Word. Once upon a time, once upon a time in a town not so very far from here, there was an old, old, old church. The building was old, its traditions, they were old. Its members were old. The members were so old that they were rapidly dying away. The old, old church, it was seriously reduced in numbers, so reduced that its members were realizing that it only made sense to think seriously about closing down that church. No one was happy about that idea. No one was wanting to close down the church. But the membership was so reduced in numbers that those remaining were hard-pressed to support the church, to pay utility bills, to maintain the building, to do the work of the, of the church, and so on. And then something happened. An old farm family that lived near the church sold many, many acres of that farm to a developer. The developer announced that quite a number of brand new houses are going to be built on that old family farm. Large houses, expensive houses, houses that would become homes to families with bunches and bunches of kids, houses that would become homes to people who had been transferred to the area by their employers, houses for retirees, houses for all kinds of people. And that's exactly what happened. Almost right next door to this old, old, old church, families moved in. Families who wanted Sunday school for their children, youth group for their teenagers. Couples moved in, people who wanted to study the Bible, all kinds of people. They moved into those new houses, people who wanted a place to worship and to serve. They came to that old, old church ready and willing to pitch in. And do you know what happened? Somehow the people who'd been in that church for lo these many years, they just couldn't figure out how to make a place for these newcomers. The mom who wanted to teach Sunday school, she didn't ever get a call inviting her to come find out who to teach and when to teach and how to teach. The CPA who was perfectly willing to serve on the finance committee, he never got an invitation. The couple who wanted to restart the choir, they were told it would never work out. The members of that old church who had hung on so long, they were just kind of angry. They were just kind of resentful at the newcomers. Didn't make much sense, but there it was. They just couldn't find a way to make a place for the newcomers, not in their church and not in their hearts. They just kind of felt that no one who hadn't suffered through the hard times had a right to enjoy good times in that old, old old church, and the church closed down. It shut its doors. Something similar to that happens in our Bible, Bible story this morning. Now this part, this story is part of a section of the gospel according to Matthew where Jesus teaches his disciples about their part in starting his new church. In that section, Jesus tells his disciple Peter that Peter and those like him, those who understand who Jesus is, Jesus tells us that we are the foundation of his church. Jesus goes on to explain that those who make up his new church will turn their backs on old ways, that they will claim new ways. Jesus explains that those who make up his new church will choose life-giving ways of serving each other. He explains that those who make up his new church will be death-defying in all kinds of ways, not the least of which is choosing to breathe new life into relationships with other people who also make up the new church. Jesus gives his followers all kinds of help with how to build life-affirming relationships with others in the church. He expects us to listen to each other, even when we'd rather turn our backs on each other. He expects us to let go of our grudges. In the story today, Jesus gives us a little more guidance about, about our relationships with other church members. Remember that he does this because, as that old song says, the church is not a building. The church is not a steeple. The church, it's the people. It always has been. 
It always will be. Jesus knew, Jesus knows that his church will stand strong as long as those who make it up stand strong together. So today he tells his first followers a story. He tells you a story and he tells me a story. We who are the building blocks of Jesus' church. It's a pretty straightforward story, one we can relate easily to, even after all these years since Jesus first told it. Remember how the story goes? We just read it. We just heard it. A group of workers starts early in the morning to work all day, work all day at agreed upon pay. Later in the day, the boss notices a bunch of people standing around with nothing to do, so he puts them to work too, without ever mentioning exactly how much he's going to pay them. Three more times, three more times that day, the boss does the same thing. He goes out on the street and he puts people to work, people who were idle. He puts them to work. At the end of the day, when it comes time for those workers to be paid, everyone gets paid exactly the same. Those who started work early, those who started midday, those who had only been at it an hour or so. Now, the workers who came early, they were not especially happy about this. They think they should receive more than the others because they've been at it longer, even though they received exactly what they contracted for. They grumble about it to the boss who says to one of them, look, friend, I'm giving you just what I said I would. Take it and get out of here. I can do whatever I want to with my own money. There's no need for you to envy these others. Honestly, now, how would you feel about that if it happened to you? Say you're a teacher. Say you're a teacher and you get to school at 7 o'clock in the morning. You teach a lesson that it took you hours to prepare. You finish up at 4 o'clock and go pick up your paycheck and realize the person ahead of you, the person ahead of you in line is a substitute who came in for the last 30 minutes of the day and received exactly the same amount you did. We can, we can all, I imagine, make application to whatever work we do. The principle is just the same. We believe that people who work longer should be paid more. Or rather, those who don't work as long, they should be paid less. And if it doesn't work out that way, most of us get kind of testy. And here we have Jesus. Here we have Jesus telling us a story about how everyone who works at all gets paid exactly the same. The thing is, is the story, it's not really about who gets paid how much. It's that last part of the story that's the important part, the important part about life together in the church. The part, you remember, the part that talks about envy, the part that talks about judging the worth of others. Remember that the story is told not about life in general. This is a story Jesus told about the church. And the point of it is that if we are members of Jesus' church, if we follow Jesus, our job is to work to build that church without wasting one single moment judging anyone else who's working alongside us. There is room for every last one of us, and there's need for every last one of us. We are all in it together. We were all in this, in this business of church building. We are all in it together. And every single one of us can be sure that God has put us to work here, that God values whoever we are, whatever we have to do in God's name to build Jesus' church. There is room for everyone in Jesus' church, but what there isn't room for in Jesus' church is judgment. You know, no doubt, that churches in general, they have a terrible reputation for judginess. I've, had, I've heard the stories, and you've heard them too, about churches who judged pastors for wearing academic robes and stoles in the pulpit, said they were too fancy, too pretentious. Or on the other hand, you've heard maybe about churches who judged preachers wearing shorts and t-shirts in the pulpit. Disrespectful. They say it's disrespectful. Or on the other hand, judge the pastor for standing up dressed in, well, you can name it, you can name it, uh, whatever. There's always the potential for judgment. And it isn't just the preacher who catches the flack. You've heard, and I've heard too, of course, about churches that judge others because of their sexual orientation or because they've been married more than a time or two or because they smell funny or talk funny or read a different translation of the Bible or just whatever. 
you've heard and I've heard too about churches that judge others because there, there once was or is as we speak a substance abuse disorder or an addiction of some kind or other. What I hope you'll keep in mind is that Leap of Faith Church, while certainly not perfect, has an excellent track record of reserving judgment, of trying to avoid it altogether, of accepting whoever comes through the door at face value, of accepting that wheat and weeds tend to grow side by side in every single one of us. Please work hard. Please work hard and keep that quality as an essential value here at Leap of Faith Church. It seems to me that that's one thing that Jesus is telling us in this story today, that that's the way to build his church. Amen. It felt kind of good to me to be back in the New Testament. I wrestled with Job long enough, I think. It's good to get back to, to good old Matthew. Well, joys and concerns, if you have one to share, call me, 903-821-4505. You can text to that same number. Um, I'd be happy to hear from you and happy to add your joy, your concern, either to the church prayer list or to my personal prayer list if it's something you'd like to keep more in confidence. Here's what I know, though, for today. You know, I always start by asking prayers for the for those who lead our world, our country, our state, the communities we live in, for those with health-related concerns. Um, as fall as fall advances, it seems that I'm hearing more and more from those who have all kinds of respiratory ailments, including COVID, but all kinds of other stuff too. Please pray for those who are pretty seriously ill, and for those who are just inconveniently ill with respiratory complaints. I ask your prayers as well for Robin, Ray, Julie, Dave, Debbie, James, Pat, the other Pat, Amy's husband, Dwayne, Billy, John, Ned, Judy, Fidel, Miriam, Carol, Steve, and Dassey. Please pray for those who serve in the military of our country, especially Tyler, Jessica, Devin, Clayton, Colin. We have some birthdays to celebrate to, uh, this week, October 17th today. Brianna Ramsey, Ramsey, Shea Skates, and the 20th, happy birthday to Paul Watkins. I ask your prayers for other joys. Continue if you would. We have for a number of weeks been praying for Rita's niece who's expecting twins coming up in December. Uh, ask your prayers of thanksgiving for the Leap of Faith Church Band, for Brad Nixon, for Summer Holbrook who produced this worship service. And now let's pray. God, seven years ago today, Leap of Faith Church worshiped for the last time in the Pottsboro Area Public Library. What a wonderful place you gave us for the earliest days of this church. God, we will always be grateful for the real and significant ministry that took place there. And then we moved to the cafeteria and the Pottsboro Middle School and onto the gym. God, with precious few places in Pottsboro that could house Leap of Faith Church, we were and always will be thankful for that place that became for us truly a church because, God, you made it one. And then four years ago today, we moved into our own building, so full of hope for the future. We prayed that day that the old metal building would become, through our partnership with you, a studio where creativity is encouraged to bloom, a chapel, a cathedral where prayer and music ring out, a home for a family of faith that places no limits on who is welcome into the fold. God, we had no idea what was ahead for us, that the building would stand almost empty for a significant period, while much of the world rested and waited to see what the future would bring. And we discovered anew during that time that the church is, of course, not a building, but the people committed to worshiping and serving our Lord Jesus Christ. Not a one of us has any idea what the future holds for your church, though we do have hopes and dreams and visions of possibilities. Please show us the way to keep on dreaming and keep on planning for the days to come without ever failing to seize on the immediate opportunities you give us for ministry. Help us never, ever to squander the possibilities and potential of the present day. Help us, God. Help us use each moment you give us fully and completely as we can and always to your glory. 
We ask you to hear this prayer as well as our prayers for those who are celebrating today, for those who are mourning. Here are our prayers for those whose names we haven't said out loud, but who are naming, naming before you silently now. And hear us as we pray together in the way Jesus teaches us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Every Sunday I remind you of what it is that Leap of Faith Church believes. You can say the words with me, I imagine, if you've worshipped here several times, or maybe you remember these words from a previous church experience. It's the Apostles' Creed, the historic confession of the Christian faith. It goes like this. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Apostles' Creed speaks to our theology, to what we believe. I remind you as all of our values statement, one adopted by our board of directors within the last couple of months, goes like this. Leap of Faith Church recognizes a single class of membership which allows for all persons to be treated equally, regardless of race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, or gender identity with respect to sacramental worship, service, leadership, marriage, and ordination. Thank you for coming to worship today. I'm glad that you were here with me. I hope you'll come back again next Sunday. If you're in the Texoma area, if you're within an easy drive of 5615 North Farm to Market 1417, please come and worship with us Sunday morning. The sanctuary is open at 11 o'clock. If you'd like to find out more about the church, mylofc.org, our website, or our Facebook page, Leap of Faith Church, we so much appreciate your contributions to ministry here at Leap of Faith. It's easy to give, text to give, 903-225-8774, PayPal button on newsletter and on website, or by check to Leap of Faith Church, 5615 North Farm to Market, 1417, here in Sherman, Texas, 75092. I do hope that you will remember what we've talked about today about reserving judgment of others for the sake of the church, and I would say as well for the sake of the kingdom and for the sake of your own soul. If I can be a help to you in any way, let me know. I'll be, I'll be glad to give you my best, helping out in whatever way I can. Hope you'll be back next week, and I hope that you will stick around and worship more with music from the Leap of Faith Band. And then go in peace, my friend. Go in peace. Take my
This is my song, O God of all the nations, a prayer that peace transcends in every place. And yet I pray for my beloved country. truth and freedom come to every nation. May peace abound where strife has raged so long, that we may see to love and build together.
change I know I've been changed angels in heaven gonna sign my name I know I've got religion Lord knows I Angels in heaven gonna sign my 